Hi gang, Rob here coming to you on 6 December 2016, late in the evening. Got a knife review for you guys tonight that is one I've been contemplating and hoping I would get some subject matter for for quite a while. This is a review of the Spyderco Mantra frame lock flipper from the design eye of one Eric Glesser produced proudly in Taichung, Taiwan <clears throat> it is a spidey shaped <laughs> leaf drop point I call it the spidey shape blade full flat ground fashion of CPM M4 tool steel <clears throat> Yeah, you know why it's got my attention now, don't you? So what is the mantra? Well, let's kind of characterize it and go over some dimensions for you. The blade is 115 thousandths thick, just shy of an eighth of an inch at its full thickness. And then it is full flat ground with lots of distal taper to a very fine edge and a very keen point. Um, the handle, well first of all the blade is 3 and 3 16 inches long by the way. The handle is 4 and 8 inches long, fashioned of 6AL4V titanium. Flow through construction with two hourglass standoffs and curiously a lanyard tube. Handle thickness just under 400 thousandths, thousandths of an inch. I measured about 394, 395, so nice and slim in pocket. <clears throat> Pivot suspension is via caged ball bearings with uh, hardened steel washers between ball bearings and titanium. The frame lock is augmented by a steel lock bar insert hardened to create the lock interface and this one locks up oh I don't know 50 60 percent pretty standard Spyderco frame lock lock up that insert as you can see looking through the lock bar cutout also serves as an over travel stop deployment is by either Spidey hole I'm so left-handed. Let me just do this left-handed. By Spidey Hole or by Flipper. So that's it. Does it look familiar to you, guys? Well, it should. It should look very familiar. It's sort of like a titanium frame lock Delica. In fact, if you look at the handles, man, they're similar. Almost identical in length. Let's see. Actually, the Matra handle is a little shorter than the Delica because of what's going on up front here. Handle thickness, man, they're about exactly the same. I think the blade thickness is also, but the actually the Delica FFG knives might be a little thinner stock than the Matra. Yeah. They're definitely ground thinner, especially in the Burnt Orange Hap 40 edition. Uh, the differences in, in envelope between the Mantra and the Delica, um, other than some minute differences in blade shape, and it is about a quarter inch longer blade. The front of the handle on the Delica 4, you have a much more pronounced finger choil in the handle on the Delica. Uh, because on the Matra, the flipper tab is going to provide that finger guard function for you. Both thumb ramps are about the same. Looks like the spidey hole is larger on the Delica. Huh, interesting. Hmm. 
And of course, the uh, country of origin is different. Japan for the Delica, Taiwan for the Mantra. So, let's first of all go over the particulars on the knife, okay? Kind of looking at overall quality. Um, ergonomically, they're almost identical. And it is very interesting, I think, these are about $150, $160 knife. Some of the Delicas with Super Steels, like this Burn Orange with Hap 40 Steel, right around $100. Um, so for a Super Steel Titanium Frame Lock Delica, I think $150 or $60 is a, a totally credible price point. Um, totally credible. It's right in line with a Sage 2. And, you know, you could argue that this has some features that make it maybe a little higher value than a Sage 2. M4 over S30V, ball bearing flipper versus phosphor bronze thumb hole only deployment. And we'll, we'll get into that, don't worry. Uh, let's look at the quality of the knife fit and finish our pure Tai Chung. We've got that vertical satin grind finish and it has that typical Tai Chung rough texture when you have a grinder satin that usually feels like a bit of a washboard going over it with your thumbnail um, and we'll talk about how that affects function as we go along fit and finish are absolutely superb everything's executed perfectly Nice free dropping blade with perfect centering, zero blade play in any direction. Everything is smooth. Countersinks for the screw heads are perfect, perfect in their depth. You know, just not a whole lot to complain about. If you love the Delica in hand and you really like the idea of a titanium frame lock ball bearing flipper version of a Delica, here you go. And you have a little more blade length and a little bit sharper tip profile. And really the blade length is all achieved because that, that sort of bullnose spine on the Delica truncates the tip a little bit. Imagine if that spine just continued on. You'd have basically the same blade length as the Mantra. So if that's what you're after, you love a Delica, but you want something a little more luxurious with some more modern features and titanium and stuff, the Matra might be a good choice. Um, and I, I've been on the fence about buying one of these for a long time. I like the Delica Ergos. I love CPM M4. I don't mind titanium frame lock flippers. Um, you know, the one detractor for me has always been that flipper tab I think it makes the knife very tall in this dimension when closed and when it's open it's sort of ungainly you know, this is just a it is not an attractive part of the knife the flipper tab just imagine if it didn't have that isn't that a much better looking knife I think it is um, just you know why couldn't we just finish off the handle like this you know Go without a flipper tab, have a nice frame lock Delica. And that, that you see where I'm headed there, right? Now, I, I really want to examine that in depth. Uh, first of all, this is a thin handled in the top to bottom dimension, thin bladed in actual thickness, especially behind the cutting edge, lightweight EDC knife, three ounces total in full titanium frame lock. But then you've got these issues. You got a, a, a flipper tab that sticks way down when it's open. And then when it's closed, this really small knife, I kind of want to measure this. When you think about it in pocket, you think of a Delica as a small knife. You know, Spider Co's have a challenge going in, don't they? Because of their round hole, a lot of blade has to stick up out of the handle in most cases. 
so you're diminishing some of your thinness just by that design element that's all spider cub and then in pocket you add the height that the uh, flipper tab sticks out of the spine of the handle functionally you got a knife that's an inch and three quarters high from that to, from that point to this point that's considerable um, you know compare that to a delica we're at an inch and a half even a military is probably not as tall in that dimension but an inch and five eighths so what started as a tiny little lightweight EDC knife now takes up from the side seam of your pocket into the middle of your pocket more room than a Spyderco military because of that flipper tab. Um, and then here's the other thing. And this goes to, well, basically... Anything that Spyderco has released that's a Taichung produced ball bearing flipper with that Taichung satin, we end up with a knife that's just not smooth closing. I'm using light finger pressure, allowing the lock bar and the detent ball to ride on the surface of the blade tank. I'm not doing that, guys. That's just how not smooth these are. They do get smoother over time as the detent ball wears a smooth groove in that satin finish but as they come from the factory they're just notchy when closing it also gives you less than less than confidence inspiring flipping um, not that they don't flip well because they do but I've actually watched quite a few videos on this knife uh, I just just watched uh, Zell's short video is, is sort of a short review of the mantra tonight. Again, I rewatched it. And I just noticed as he picked up the knife to flip it, I noticed him being tentative. Like, okay, is my hand in the right spot? Okay, go. And I, I watched him misfire a couple times. And that's sort of common with all the guys I've watched review this knife. It's not a knife that you pick up without thinking, have your hand in the right position, for great deployment it just seems like it requires some thought um, and I think it's one of those situations where Spyderco loses some identity here and I just want you to watch it I'm gonna pick up this knife three times and open it three different ways with my good hand my left hand Okay, which one of those ways look the least natural to you? Well, it, it, it's because it is. You know, one of the great things that made Spyderco Spyderco is that you pick up a Spyderco knife. It doesn't really matter where your hand is. If your thumb can find that hole, out comes the knife. You know, once you're sort of spidey savvy, you pick up a knife and stick your middle finger in the hole and bang, out it comes. The flipper tab, it isn't as fast. It's just not. And it doesn't feel as natural. Um, I, my general impression after hanging with this knife for a, a couple days, this is a knife that's in for sharpening, is that it could have been so good if they just made a titanium frame lock Delica. Could have been so good. But because of the pressures of the current market, well, if, if you're going to release a new knife, it's got to be a ball bearing pivot and a flipper. Well, this knife, my friends, would be so much better if it didn't have a flipper. And frankly, if it just had plain old phosphor bronze bushers, bushings or washers, 
like a sage tip. Um, it would last longer. It would be less affected by debris. Um, and really, you don't even need the stainless lock insert. Spyderco does such a great job carburizing their lock faces on knives like the Sage 2, the Swish Bowie, uh, maybe even the Spidey Chef. I'm not sure if it's got a steel insert or not. Uh, it's just kind of one of those sad things going on right now in the knife world. Uh, you know, if you're going to charge 150, 160 bucks for a three inch class titanium frame lock, there's certain things it has to have in order to sell in 2016. Whether it makes the knife better or worse, it's got to have ball bearings, it's got to have a flipper, and it's got to have a steel over travel insert. And a steel insert to lock it up. Now, having said all that, is the Matra a good knife? Heck yes, it's a good knife. It just really is. It's a good knife. The blade profile is superb for getting the most out of that CPM M4. You know, I, I like using CPM M4 in a knife blade that's going to be ground thinly for superb slicing performance because CPM M4 takes a great fine edge but a knife that will still be tough and handle heavy duty cutting even in a thin dimension. That is the beauty of that steel and this knife is perfectly engineered to do that. Uh, when it comes to the heavy duty stuff though, I'd prefer that it had phosphor bronze washers to ball bearings. Just, you know, it's delicate fine in all grips. Great looking stone wash on the handle. Too bad really. You know, if you're going to make this knife in a titanium frame lock, ball bearing, flipper, why didn't we give it that beautiful, almost mirror polished stone wash that the Swiss Bowie has? So this tang area would work and play well with that detent ball. It would be so much smoother. You know, a lot of these ball bearing knives sort of almost fall on themselves. Sometimes they do. Not, not the case with this guy. I mean, it takes a pretty good shake to get it closed. I don't generally hate that, but most of you do. I don't know. I, I've held off buying one of these because just looking at them in pictures and videos, I, this just didn't do it for me. Um, aesthetically and functionally. And now after having one in my hand for a couple days, my I think my suspicions are confirmed. Um, a spider co knife with a high spine and a round hole shouldn't have a flipper, in my opinion. You got, in my mind, the best deployment method ever in a modern folder, the spidey hole. And you muck it up with the flipper. You take two deployment methods that both add height to the knife, and you combine them in one design, making the knife doubly big in that dimension. Doesn't need to be that way. You know, putting a flipper on a Spyderco with a high spine hole design blade is kind of like, it's just about as bad an idea as the Benchmade 300 ball axis lock flipper was. One of the worst flipping knives ever made. Um, just trying to be too many things to too many people in a very small knife. I think that's why I've seen a lot of videos about this knife, especially when they were first released. Uh, by guys who gave them generally positive reviews and then had them for sale the next day. It's just one of those knives that it, it seems like a great idea on paper. Uh, it's definitely well made, but after you experience it for a while, you just kind of go, hmm, no. Nah. At least that's me. Uh, many of you guys might be Matra owners who love the knife. But for me, it's kind of the same relationship I had with the Domino. A lot of respect for the Domino. Um, but I, in a knife that was very similar in size and shape, I just prefer the Sage. Simpler, uh, 
great deployment with no flipper doesn't need to be there. So I've owned two dominoes and didn't keep either one of them very long. And uh, I probably won't own a Matra. But I can certainly understand why you would. So there's an objectively biased review on the Spyderco Matra. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is, and this mantra will be, sharp.